Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host. Are you also one of the people who think the PSP was just a cute little gadget? Think again. We're about to showcase 25 titles that blew our minds with their graphics. From the golden visuals of Silent Hill, shattered memories, to the mythic battles in God of War, Ghost of Sparta. These games squeezed every pixel of power from the PSP. In today's episode, we're taking a wild ride through the most eye-popping PSP games that are graphically impressive. So, without any further ado, let's revisit these pocket-sized powerhouses that redefined and Held gaming. Silent Hill Shattered Memories Today we're starting strong with Silent Hill Shattered Memories, a PSP classic that tosses you into a chilling reimagining of the original Silent Hill game. Here, writer Harry Mason desperately searches for his daughter in the eerily snowy town of Silent Hill, unfolding a plot distinct from its predecessor with a mix of old and new faces. The gameplay cleverly splits between a psychotherapist's office, where he answers to psychological tests shape the game's world, and the haunting streets of Silent Hill navigated in an over-the-shoulder view. In the game, your arm only with a smartphone and flashlight, using them to unravel the story and evade the ever-present threat of monsters in the nightmare dimension. Graphically, Shattered Memories is a standout, especially for its time and PSP. The game's graphical fidelity, as well as its atmospheric lighting and weather effects, make the town of Silent Hill feel alive, or perhaps hauntingly undead. All in all, the game gives you a one-of-a-kind experience that plays with your mind as much as you play with it. God of War, Ghost of Sparta. God of War, Ghost of Sparta takes you deep into the tortured soul of Kratos, the God of War. Haunted by his past, Kratos sets off on a quest to uncover his origins. In Atlantis, he learns his brother Deimos is alive and imprisoned. This revelation sets him on a path to the domain of death for a brotherly rescue mission. Along the way, he encounters mythical beasts and gods, culminating in a fierce showdown with the God of Death, Thanatos. The gameplay sticks to the series' roots, intense hack and slash action, combo-based combat using the iconic blade of Athena and a mix of puzzles and platforming. The game ups the ante with 25% more gameplay than its PSP predecessor and introduces new weapons like the Arms of Sparta, adding a super unique variety to Kratos' deadly arsenal. Now, let's talk about the graphics. Seriously, this game was like a superhero for the PSP, pushing it to its absolute limits. People were raving about how amazing it looked, comparing it to PS3 games. And guess what? It even outdid PS2 titles. We're talking next-level details here. The environments are so rich and detailed that you'd feel like you were right Right there in ancient Greece, and the character animations, <laughs> super smooth, like watching a high-budget movie. Plus those cinematic cutscenes, absolute game changers for handheld gaming, almost as if having a mini Hollywood epic right in your hands. This game really proves that breathtaking visuals aren't confined to living room consoles. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Set in 1974 Costa Rica, we follow our hero Snake as he leads Militaire Sans Frontier, aka Soldiers Without Borders. Hired to check out a suspicious army in Costa Rica, Snake's journey is packed with twists, including a tape with the boss's voice. Is she alive? That's the burning question. The gameplay is both stealth and action with two main modes, mission and mother base. In mission mode, you're sneaking around, taking down enemies, and trying to be a ghost. Extra ops are like the side quests offering fun diversions. However, there's a catch. Your performance is graded. Go all guns blazing and you'll lose points. Be a ninja and you're golden. Mother base is where you play boss, manage your team, upgrade gear, and even capture military vehicles. It's like a mini strategy game inside the a stealth action fest. And now to the big question, what makes it so graphically advanced? Well, for a PSP game, it's crazily detailed. The character models, environments, and interactive cutscenes are top-notch. The game looks even better in its HD remastered version for the PS3 and Xbox 360. It's a visual treat, especially for a handheld title. The game gave us worthy storytelling with super engaging gameplay and tech that pushed the limits of the PSP. It's like Kojima crammed a console experience into the palm of your hand.
Final Fantasy Type 0 Final Fantasy Type 0 is all about this group of magic-wielding students, Class 0, from Vermilion Peristilium. They get roped into a messy war because the Militezi Empire wants to snatch up all the magic crystals. It's darker and more intense than your usual Final Fantasy game, with plot twists like assassinations and betrayals. Coming to the gameplay, you're in charge of these 14 students, having into real-time battles and making big moves on the world map. It's a mix of fast-paced action and strategy. Plus, there's cool stuff like breeding chocobos, those big adorable birds, and even commanding armies on the map. It's like the usual Final Fantasy vibe, but with extra spices added. Now, speaking of the graphics, they're jaw-dropping gorgeous, considering its ability as a PSP game. It's got these really detailed scenes and a cinematic feel that makes you forget you're playing on a console that fits the palm of your hand, as if they squeezed a big-budget movie onto your PSP. It's the kind of game where you start playing after dinner and suddenly it's 2am, whoops, and you're still glued to the screen because Orion's and its heroes just don't let you go. Motorstorm Arctic Edge Motorstorm Arctic Edge is the cool third entry in the Motorstorm series, literally set in the freezing Arctic. This game is all about leaving the desert dust and tropical greenery of the first two games in the rearview mirror and heading to Alaska's icy landscapes. The game plays a frosty twist on the series' roots. You've got your classic nitrous boosts, but here's the chilly kicker. You cool your engines by plowing through deep snow or cruising under waterfalls. Expect no more than 10 races per race, keeping it tight and intense. Watch out for those new hazards, like avalanches you can trigger, yep, with a horn or a kaboom, and I see bridges that can't handle the heavyweights. Graphically, this game was ahead of its time. The way it captures the Arctic environment is downright gorgeous, from snow-laden tracks that feel real enough to give you a chill, to the dynamic hazards like avalanches and breaking ice bridges. It's a visual feast that really transports you to the edge of the Arctic Circle. You can think of it like the developers took a snow globe, shook it up, and let us race in it. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite In Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, you're exploring deep into an expansive action RPG world where the thrill of the hunt reigns supreme. Developed and published by Capcom for the PlayStation Portable, this game is like Monster Hunter Freedom 2 but on steroids, with more missions, monsters and gear to geek out over. Released on March 27, 2008 in Japan, it's the ultimate playground for hunters looking for a bigger challenge. This game is a buffet of monster hunting goodness. You've got a new feline fighter buddy, aka Cat Companions for the win. Rarity 9 and 10 weapons and armor, and an item box that's like a bottomless pit. The epic hunting quest is the new kid on the block, letting you face up to four monsters in a single quest. Weapons now can reach purple sharpness, which is basically the lightsaber of sharpness levels. Yeah. Plus, higher ranked quests and new elder quests add even more depth to your hunting career. And let's not forget the DLC, which outfits your feline buddy in some snazzy armor. Oh, and graphically, for a PSP game, <laughs> it's pretty darn impressive. The new monsters, like the terrifying You Can Loss, are designed with such detail detail that you can almost feel their breath on your face. <laughs> the environments are vast and immersive, sucking you into a world where every corner holds a new beast to conquer. So to wrap this up, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite is like opening a door to a world where you're the hero, the monsters are massive, and every hunt feels like a blockbuster movie climax. Gran Turismo. Alright, let's take a cruise through Gran Turismo for the PSP, a game that's all about high-speed thrills and sleek cars. It's a journey that began with the reveal in 2004 and finally hit the roads in 2009 as a launch title for the PSP Go. This game's definitely like your dream garage comes to life. You've got 833 vehicles to choose from, including the big names like Ferrari, Lamborghini and Bugatti. Imagine starting off with a humble car and working your way up to these legends. The game has a buffet of tracks, 45 to be precise, with reverse layouts, bumping it to 72. You're not just racing, you're completing driving missions to progress, trading cars and even rocking out to your own tunes while burning rubber once you unlock that feature, of course. <laughs> For a PSP title, it's really an eye candy. The cars are modelled with an insane level of detail, making each one feel like a miniature masterpiece. The tracks are real enough to make you feel the wind in your hair, and the fact that you can customise your soundtrack, well, that's just icing on the cake. Gran Turismo on PSP is a portable tribute to the love of cars. With a handheld device, you're carrying a world where where speed, style, and automotive dreams come alive in your pocket. Vroom vroom, baby! <laughs> 
Tekken 6. Tekken 6 kicks off six months after Jin Kazama's victory over Jinpachi Mishima. Jin, now heading the Mishima Zaibatsu, declares war on the world. This sparks a global conflict with his dad, Kazuya, leading the opposition as the head of G Corporation. Amidst this chaos, Lars Alexanderson, a rebel Tekken Force leader, loses his memory during a G Corporation attack. Joined by android Elisa Boskanovich, Lars travels the world to piece together his past and discovers he's Haihachi Mishima's illegitimate son. The story spirals into a showdown involving ancient evils and family dramas, all centered around the mysterious King of Iron Fist tournament. Tekken 6 ups the ante with larger, more interactive stages. Players can smash through walls and floors to discover new areas. The character customization is more detailed, with items impacting gameplay. The new rage system boosts damage when health is low, the bound system adds depth to combos. The scenario campaign mode, exclusive to consoles, blends beat-em-up and classic Tekken gameplay, offering a refreshing twist. The graphics and story are really an eye-popping, mind-blowing trip that really flips the script on what we expect from fighting games. You're definitely gonna feel like stepping into a world where every punch and kick is so real you almost feel it. Plus, who can resist the rush of laying down like some killer combos while getting caught up in all the family drama? Come on, Stan. Obscure 2, Obscure the Aftermath. Obscure 2, or Obscure the Aftermath, for North American fans is this survival horror game. It's like a roller coaster ride through a nightmare university campus. Two years post the eerie Leafmore incident, we're back with a bang at Ball Creek University. Here, a bizarre drug derived from a mysterious flower is wreaking havoc. Our protagonists, including survivors from the original Obscure, are thrown into a world crawling with mutants. Imagine a frat party gone horribly wrong. Yeah, that's where this horror fest kicks off. The narrative twists through dark, intense scenarios involving mutated monstrosities and shocking revelations. It's a tale of survival with a heavy dose of the supernatural. You're constantly on your toes, switching between characters, each with their unique abilities to combat the grotesque mutants. There's this raw, gritty feeling to the gameplay that perfectly complements the game's dark theme. Now let's talk visuals. Obscure 2 is a graphical masterpiece of its time. The game's use of dynamic lighting creates an atmosphere so thick you could cut it with a knife. The environments are super detailed and the characters are one of a kind. And the way the shadows play tricks on your eyes deserves an applause. Yeah, almost as if they took the essence of a horror movie and crammed it into your gaming console. Patapon 3. In Patapon 3, the story picks up right where Patapon 2 left off. Our brave Patapons, after constructing the Rainbow Bridge, stumble upon a mysterious box in a new land. Ignoring Miden's warnings, they open it, unleashing the seven evil archfiends who turn everyone to stone, except for the steadfast flag bearer Patapon. Just when things seem bleak, out pops Silver Hoshipon from the same box, offering a glimmer of hope. Ah. Silver Hoshipon revives the hero, merging him with the Almighty and transforming him into the mighty Uber Hero. The Uber Hero along with Hatapon and three other revived Hatapons, Ton Yorida, Shin Tatarazai, and Kan Yumiyacha, form the Trifecta. Together, they venture on a quest to defeat the Archfiends and unravel the mysteries of this new world. Now let's see the gameplay, where it really shines. Patapon 3 stays true to its rhythmic roots, with gameplay revolving around using the PSP's face buttons as drums to command your Patapon army. But, hold on, it gets better. You are now the Uber Hero, who's not just commanding, but also physically beating the drums. This this change adds a personal touch to every command you issue. What sets Patapon 3 apart in the graphics department is its blend of cartoonish, silhouetted characters and intricately detailed backgrounds, a unique style crafted by French artist Rolito. This sequel elevates the visual experience with more refined and visually rich environments, maintaining the game's iconic look while pushing the PSP's graphical capabilities. Patapon 3 is where catchy beats meet unforgettable battles, all wrapped in a visually stunning box of fun and strategic gameplay. John Dark. John Dark kicks off with a twist on history. You get to play through several real events mixed with fantasy. Play this in your head. France and England are duking it out in the Hundred Years' War, and there's a demonic twist. The English, powered by demon soldiers, thanks to a shady deal, are wreaking havoc. Enter our hero, Jean, a village girl from Dom Remy. After her village gets torched by the English, she, along with pals Roger and Leanne, is all that is left. Guided by a celestial voice and rocking a magical armband, Jean's on a mission to rally an army and 
kick some English and demon butt to save France. Speaking of the butt-kicking gameplay now, you're manoeuvring Jean and her crew across a map of France, diving into battles and visiting cities to gear up. Think turn-based strategy with a rock-paper-scissors vibe, thanks to character affinities. Sol, Luna, Stella. There's this cool burning aura trick. Hit an enemy and a power spot appears, right for extra damage. Plus, Jean's got this nifty armband. Pop in a gem, and she transforms into a super soldier for a few turns. Victory conditions vary, but letting Jean fall... <laughs> uh, game over, buddy. Mm. If you're smitten by the story and gameplay, well, wait till you hear about the stunning graphical appeal this game offers. The landscapes, characters and magical effects are just so smooth for your eyes, capturing the true essence of medieval France with a mystical vibe. The cutscenes are like flipping through a vibrant animated history book. Huh, and that burning aura? Oh, pure graphic gold. All in all, this game's a beautifully crafted, fantastical journey back in time, meshed with strategy and a dash of magical warfare. Resistance Retribution Next up, we have Resistance Retribution. This handheld masterpiece tells a human story amidst an alien war. The game throws us into the shoes of British Royal Marine Lieutenant James Grayson. After a heart-wrenching decision to kill his brother, who's halfway turned into a chimera. These are the bad guys, by the way. Grayson goes rogue, demolishing 26 enemy centers before getting nabbed. Facing execution, he's offered a second chance by the Maquis, a European resistance group. Grayson's journey is not just about blowing up aliens, it's personal, filled with tough choices and sacrifices, all set in a Europe ravaged by Chimera invasion. This is not your regular run-and-gun shooter. Retribution spices things up with a cover system that glues you to safety spots automatically, plus an aim assist feature for that extra oomph in your shots. What's super cool? Well, the game lets you play with a DualShock 3 controller if you connect your PSP to a PS3. It's like the best of both worlds. And there's this infected mode. Think of it as an alternate reality where Grayson gets Chimera powers because who doesn't want to breathe underwater, right? Mm -hmm. The graphics and tech wizardry in the game is super well put, and this is where Resistance Retribution flexes its muscles. For a PSP title, this one is seriously eye-catching. It pushes the portable console to its limits, rendering a war-torn Europe with impressive details. The characters look sharp, the lighting sets the perfect mood, and those Chimera <laughs> seriously creepy in the best way, as if they squeezed a PS3 game right into your PSP. Chef's kiss. Mwah. It's safe to say that this game is a portable revolution. And Tony said you could hook me up. Uh-huh, what you looking for? Something fast. You know, not too expensive, around two to three. And we Midnight Club LA Remix Let's talk about Midnight Club, Los Angeles. You're the new speedster in town, zooming through LA's streets, which are as big as the last three game cities combined. It's all about climbing up from your basic ride to the sleekest cars and bikes in the city. The gameplay? Super cool. You get a 24-hour day-night cycle and weather that actually changes how you drive. And the traffic? Totally real, with licensed cars and everything. And it's not just about racing. You've got to dodge traffic, fix up your ride on the fly, and even deal with the cops if they catch you speeding. What makes this game a Total eye candy is its graphics. Thanks to Rockstar's Rage system, LA has never looked better in a game. We're talking about stunning day-to-night transitions, rain that actually makes the road slippery, and street lights that make the cities glow at night. So strap in, hit the gas, and get ready for some of the most heart-pumping races you've ever experienced. I am restored. Beware, fire spirit, for the dark. Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands. Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands is this awesome action-adventure game that's like a bridge between the sands of time and warrior within. It's all about the prince's adventures in ancient Persia, dealing with magical threats and jinn. Each version of the game has its own story and gameplay style, but they all focus on platforming, puzzles, and time-bending powers. The prince has these element-based powers, like freezing water to climb on or restoring bits of the environment. The combat's all about dodging and rolling to avoid getting hit while you take down groups of enemies. You get to upgrade your abilities and stats, which is pretty sweet. Graphically, this game's a standout title. The palace and environments are super detailed, and the magical effects are oh, totally epic. The day-night cycle and weather system add a real-life touch, one of the reasons why it's so popular to this day. You'll definitely feel like they've crammed a big console game into the PSP. Overall, The Forgotten Sands is a fresh take on the series with its own unique charm. Imagine parkouring around ancient Persia with magical powers in your pocket. Yeah, that's this game for you. Oh yeah! Get serious!
Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Coming in hot is Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, which is not just a prequel to FFBII, it's like stepping into a whole new chapter of the Final Fantasy universe. You play as Zack Fair, this cool soldier guy who's on a mission to find his missing comrade, Genesis. But, plot twist, along the way, Zack stumbles upon some heavy secrets involving other soldiers like Sephiroth and Angel. It's set in this period of war between Shinra and Wutai, leading right up to the start of FFBII. Gameplay's action-packed. You're controlling Zack through open areas, doing missions, battling monsters, and leveling up with cool side missions. You've got this real-time combat system where you can move Zack around, use spells and block attacks. Plus, the Materia system lets you customize Zack's abilities, which is wicked. Graphics-wise, Crisis Core is a total show-off for the PSP. The settings are incredibly rich in detail, the movements are fluid, and the cutscenes, well, it's pretty wild how they crammed all that goodness into a portable game. To sum it up, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII is way more than just a backstory. It's almost like having a pocket-sized piece of the Final Fantasy world that you can dive into anytime. The Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, where every keyblade swing is a step into a breathtaking Disney adventure, and every world is a new story waiting to be told. We're going back in time, a whole decade before the original Kingdom Hearts. This game's like the Star Wars The Phantom Menace of the Kingdom Hearts universe. We've got these three cool characters, Terra, Aqua, and Ventus. They're keyblade apprentices, kinda like Jedi, but fancy keys. Their mission is to find this missing master, Xehanort, and save the world from these bad vibes creatures called the Unversed. It's a wild ride through different Disney worlds and <laughs> guess what, the story changes depending on which character you play. It's like uh, getting three epic tales in one. Now let's talk gameplay. Imagine you are a wizard, but instead of a wand, you've got a keyblade and you're also kind of a ninja. Hmm. That's a birth by sleep. Oh yeah, it's got this awesome command system where you can mix and match abilities like you're at a magical buffet. You've got deck commands for special moves and as you fight, you fill up these gauges that let you unleash even more powerful attacks. No magic points here, folks. We're using a focus system for spell casting. Think of it like mana, but cooler. Plus, there's this dimension link thing where you can borrow powers from Disney characters. Oh, and the best part, multiplayer modes where you can race, battle, or play a board game with friends. Yeah, it's like having a Keyblade party. Now, why is this game a feast for your eyes? Well, for a game on the PlayStation Portable, it's like they crammed an entire universe of Disney magic into this tiny screen. The worlds are vibrant and full of life, the characters look like they jump straight out of a Disney movie, and the battle effects, well, pure eye candy. It's like the game is constantly throwing a fireworks show and you're invited. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror Siphon Filter Dark Mirror is like stepping back into the world of Gabe Logan, this special ops badass from the Siphon Filter series. Set after the Omega Strain, Gabe's tasked with dealing with Red Section, a paramilitary group that's causing chaos in Alaska. The plot thickens with conspiracies, secret projects, and Gabe's hunt for Red Section leaders, all wrapped in a story that's just as gripping as a blockbuster movie. Gameplay-wise, <laughs> it offers the best of both worlds, third-person shooting and stealth. You're back to the series' roots with linear gameplay, packing a bunch of cool weapons weapons and vision modes. The game lets you sneak around, hug walls and pop shots around corners. Ah, multiplayer's a blast too, with mods like Deathmatch and Team Deathmatch, and you can chat with friends online while playing. Graphically, for a PSP game, it's pretty dope. Everything you see around you is rich in detail, and the action sequences are also super smooth. It doesn't feel forced and gives off this natural action-packed vibe. With Siphon Filter, Dark Mirror, you're inside an action movie where you're the lead, sneaking through enemy lines and taking out the bad guys with style. <laughs> Soul Calibur Broken Destiny Soul Calibur Broken Destiny is this rad fighting game in the Soul Calibur series developed for the PSP. It's like Soul Calibur 4's younger, cooler sibling. The game brings in 28 characters from the Soul Calibur series and introduces two new faces, Kratos from God of War and a new original character, Dampierre. It's a sweet deal, especially for beginners or anyone who just wants to get into the Soul Calibur scene without being overwhelmed. Gameplay-wise, they tweaked a few things from Soul Calibur 4. The muscle adjustment feature is gone, but now you can play around with how your character's gear fits. Like, you can uh, adjust the rotation and size of some items, which is super handy for getting that perfect warrior look. You can't totally redress original characters with custom items, but you can still change their colors. Plus, creating your own versus screen photo has a nice personal touch. The game supports both English and Japanese languages, which is cool for variety. The modes are awesome too. Quick match lets you pick AI opponents, and winning gives you unique titles. Graphics-wise, Soul Calibur Broken Destiny is pretty slick for a PSP game. The character models are super rich in detail and don't 
cut corners. Animations are also super smooth, like they crammed a console game into a handheld without losing the visual flair. Burnout Dominator. Next up, we have Burnout Dominator, which is a 2007 racing game that's all about pushing limits and going full throttle. Developed by EA UK and published by Electronic Arts for PS2 and PSP, this game is a bit of a standout in the Burnout series. It's the only title not developed by Criterion Games, but they still got a shout out at the startup. Oh. The big thing about Dominator is its focus on burnouts. You get these by draining your boost meter completely without stopping, which lights up this rat flame effect that turns blue when you hit supercharged boost. It's all about driving dangerously, lighting up those arrows on the boost meter and chaining those burnouts for an adrenaline rush. While it dropped some features from Burnout Revenge, like traffic checking and crash mode, and didn't support online multiplayer or USB steering wheels on the PS2, it brought in a fresh set of wheels and some new challenges. The World Tour mode splits into different series based on car classes, and you've got a variety of events like Race, Road Rage, Eliminator, and the Intense Maniac mode. For those who love setting records, there's the Record Breaker mode, where you can go wild in race, Road Rage, Time Attack, and Maniac Mode trying to set high scores. But here's the cool part. One of the tracks, Spiritual Towers, is based in Kuala Lumpur, giving you a taste of racing through a building modelled on the Sultan Abdul Samad building. It's like a virtual tour with a racing twist. The game's graphics are pretty slick for its time, especially on the PSP, with detailed car models and immersive environments. It's the kind of game that gets your heart racing and your adrenaline pumping, making every race feel like a high-speed adventure. Shadow of Destiny Shadow of Destiny on the PSP is a trip down memory lane, especially for those who caught its original PS2 release back in 2001. You're stepping into the shoes of Ike, a guy who has the unfortunate habit of getting stabbed to death. Just as you start playing, Ike's on the wrong end of a knife, but instead of a one-way ticket to the afterlife, he lands in a strange limbo with a mysterious being called Homunculus. This up character hands Ike a Z-pad, a time travel device that lets him dodge his own demise. Sounds like a recipe for an adrenaline in pumping action game, right? Well, hold your horses. Shadow of Destiny is more of a classic adventure game. It's all about exploration, chatting up the locals, and using items from your inventory to twist the story. Don't expect high-octane combat, it's more about guiding Ike through Lebensbaum, a quaint but rather empty European town. Lebensbaum itself feels a bit like a ghost town. The streets echo with your footsteps. Every building is a carbon copy of the last. Interaction is minimal. Ike's mostly a silent protagonist, triggering scenes just by being near near people. The gameplay can feel dated, with a lot of wandering around and a limited map and figuring out what to do next. However, the game's saving grace is its narrative, offering multiple endings and ways to solve puzzles, keeping things interesting. Graphically, this game is a miracle. Remember, this is a port of a 9-year-old PS2 game which was quite ahead of its time with extremely cutting-edge visuals. Also, the environment details have great textures and music tracks that are bound to keep you hooked for hours. The voice acting also does a pretty impressive job for the main characters, though some side characters can come off as a bit cheesy. Trust me when I say this, Shadow of Destiny on the PSP is something where the story is a hook, almost like a well-read book that just doesn't lose its charm. Tomb Raider Anniversary Tomb Raider Anniversary is like a blast from the past, but with a super refreshing take. Developed by Crystal Dynamics and Buzz Monkey Software, this 2007 action-adventure game is a revamped version of the OG 1996 Tomb Raider, and let me tell you, they did a stellar job. You're back in the boots of the legendary Lara Croft, this time hunting down the Scion of Atlantis. It's a prequel to Tomb Raider Legend, so you're getting some cool backstory here. Gameplay-wise, it's a classic Tomb Raider with a modern touch. Lara's acrobatic as ever, jump climbing, shimmying, <laughs> you name it. Puzzles, traps, quick time events, yeah, it's all here. You've got medipacks to heal, artifacts to find, and costumes to unlock. Plus, combat's got this auto-lock feature, so you can focus on dodging and landing those strategic headshots. The Wii version even throws in some nifty motion controls for puzzles and platforming. But let's talk graphics. For its time, Anniversary was pretty slick. The levels are meticulously designed, and Lara's animations are smoother than ever. There's this attention to detail that really immerses you in the game's world. Whether you're a long-time fan or a newcomer to the series, Lara's quest for the Scion of Atlantis is a journey worth taking. Loco Roco 2 Loco Roco 2 is the super chill platformer that hit the PSP back in 2008, and it's basically the sequel to the original Loco Roco. Picture this. The Loco Roco, these adorably round creatures, have just kicked the Moja cause butt and are living their best life. But the bad guys, led by Bon Mucho, aren't done yet. They whip up this nasty song that drains life from everything. Mm, pretty dark, right? They zoom back to the Loco Roco planet on a meteor, ready to wreak havoc all over again. So our cheerful Loco Roco 
Hardcore pals have to go on this big adventure to fix everything and push back the Moja menace. Now, the gameplay is where it gets fun. It's like you are the planet itself. You tilt the world with the shoulder buttons on the PSP to roll your Loco Roco around. Smacking both buttons makes them jump. You can split up your big Loco Roco into little ones with the circle button or squish them back together. It's all about rolling, bouncing and singing your way through these vibrant levels. What makes Loco Roco 2 visually pop is its simplicity and colours. It's not about being graphically intense, but more about this clean, super bright and cheerful style. Everything looks like a moving children's book with bold colours and quirky designs. It's a game that just makes you feel good playing it. Lumines 2. Let's talk about another PSP game that hit the scene back in 2006. Yep, we're talking about the sequel to Lumines Puzzle Fusion Lumines 2. But this one is more cranked up with so much cool stuff. The gist of the game? Well, you're going to be moving, rotating and dropping these 2x2 two two blocks to match colours and form squares. When this timeline sweeps across, it wipes these squares off the board and boom, you score points. The bigger the combo, the bigger the score. Now, the gameplay is all about that classic Lumines vibe but with some fresh take. The modes from the First game are back, challenge mode, time attack, puzzle, you name it. But get this, they've tweaked challenge mode into four classes, each one getting tougher than the last. And time attack mode? Now you can record your gameplay, which is pretty neat. But here's where it gets wild, they've added three new modes. There's a mission mode where you get all sorts of tasks, like clearing the board in a set time. Skin edit mode is all about creating your own playlist from skins you've unlocked. Then there's sequencer, where you can get your DJ on and make your own music tracks. Plus you can tweak the HUD and get gameplay tips from the new tutorial. This game is the music festival that fits right in your hands with an energy that's just infectious. If you're into puzzle games and love a good beat, Lumines 2 is like hitting a dance floor with your brain. Don't be an idiot. No, just say no, crankhead. Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories, developed by Rockstar, takes us back to the sun-soaked streets of Vice City, Miami's doppelganger, 1984. It's like a flashback to two years before the original Vice City game. You're in the boots of Victor Vic Vance, an ex-soldier and a minor character from the 2002 game, as he dives into the underworld to build a criminal empire with his brother, Lance. The whole gig kicks off, with Vic trying to score some cash for his sick brother Pete's meds. But, uh, as you'd expect, things get messy with gangs and drug laws getting in the mix. The gameplay? Classic GTA stuff. You get the usual third-person shooting, driving all sorts of vehicles, but they've thrown in this sweet empire building system. You're hustling to take over businesses from other gangs and running different rackets to make that dough. It's a nice change from the usual run and gun. Let's not forget the multiplayer mode for up to six players. That's only on the PSP, by the way. Graphically, Vice City Stories was a big deal for the PSP. It brought in more detailed animations, better load times, and a more vibrant Vice City. You could feel the 80s vibe with more lively streets, complex explosions and denser environments. It's like they took the essence of the 2002 game and cranked it up for the handheld console. Daxter. Daxter is a quirky spin-off from the beloved Jack and Daxter series, focusing on Daxter's solo adventure. Set in the two-year gap between Jack 2's opening scene, it's all about Daxter's journey while Jack is locked away. You are this bug exterminator dude in Haven City, juggling your day job with a mission to find your pal, Jack. Playing as Daxter is simply a blast. You're jumping, swinging on zip lines, squeezing through tight spaces, and even hopping into vehicles to zip around the map. Portals take you to mission locations, each a step closer to finding Jack. The combat is mainly melee, smacking enemies with your electronic swatter. As the game progresses, you get this cool extermination tank loaded with eco-based bug spray. It gets even better with upgrades like a jetpack and flamethrower. Taking a hit? <laughs> no sweat. Just grab some green eco-health packs to patch up. You're also on the hunt for collectibles, golden bug gems and those classic precursor orbs. They unlock neat stuff in the game. Plus, there are these hidden picture frames that give you unique items. Got a Jack X save file? Connect it to Daxter for some sweet customizations like goggles and a hover scooter paint job. Daxter is a full-on action-packed ride with our favourite orange sidekick. It really feels like uncovering a hidden chapter in the Jack and Daxter saga, where the little guy gets to shine in his own heroic tale. Marvelous verdict, and that's a wrap, guys. From the streets of Grand Theft Auto, Vice City Stories, to the cosmic antics in Kingdom Hearts, Birth by Sleep, we've zipped through the PSP's most graphically smashing hits. These games weren't just about playing on the go, they were tiny titans of tech, showing off what the PSP could really do. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button so you're up to date with all our newest uploads. And hey, drop a comment below. We'd love to hear if you have a game in mind that really impressed you with its graphics, and we'll see you in the next one.